Nah, he's the warrior, man. He's battling. He's banged up. He's taking shots. They're a physical team. Uh, so, you know, that's, you're going to have to gut it out. Yeah, you guys can see, he's going to talk amongst the best players in the state. Big stages. He does it every time. It makes incredible catches. Crow plays, strips a guy on a kickoff. Yeah, God does it all. East, West, keep the oppas hot, I'll toss you with them choppers West side, how we rock and pull up on you, get the poppin' hey. Them boy don't want no smoke Them boy don't want no smoke East, West, keep the oppas hot, I'll toss you with them choppers West side, how we rock and pull up on you, get the poppin' hey. Them boy don't want no smoke Them boy don't want no smoke The Fairmont Senior Polar Bears play their home opener tonight at East West Stadium in Fairmont. And the Robert C. Bird Flying Eagles will be in town. It's a Big Ten Conference matchup. The Flying Eagles 0-1 on the season, having lost to Kaiser last week 28-0. And the Polar Bears 1-0, a shutout winner over the Lewis County Minutemen. Fairmont Senior has a streak going against the Flying Eagles. The Polar Bears have won nine straight against RCB. Now, let's meet tonight's starting lineups. Brody Whitehair, number four, junior. Dylan Hours, number five, senior. Damani Johnson, eight, junior. Chris Wilson, 21, junior. Max Rosero, number 40, junior. Cannon Dinger, 10, junior. Anyone Jones, number 11, junior. Logan Canfield, number two, junior. Gavin Michael, number 14, senior. Riley Green, number 72, senior. Joseph Richmond, number 61, senior. Caleb Barber guys, 50, junior. Trevor Bigelow, number 55, junior. Henry Lister, number 68, junior. Caleb Angelon, number 57, senior. Love Paul Calcini, 65, junior. Luke Abrazino, number 33, senior. Taren Boda, number 3, sophomore. Taylor Thorne, number 81, senior class. Jordan Wagner, number 1, junior non-traditional in what a you know, typical quarterback would be doing. You saw RCB play Kaiser the first game. They were shut out 28 to nothing. So obviously some offensive challenges for them. Defensively, how did they look? You know, defensively, uh, they gave up a big player off the bat, but then after that, they settled into the game. And uh, Kaiser is mostly a wing T team, but they also will sprinkle in some spread and trips looks, which uh, apply to us a little bit more when we're watching film. And uh, so they do, they match up a little bit better when it comes to the secondary. So uh, that's something that'll be a challenge for our guys, uh, our school guys uh, to see, uh, you know, if, if we can still uh, get open, make catches, make plays against a, you know, an athletic uh, secondary. Tell me how the team is going now, injury-wise. You played just one game. Preseason went pretty, pretty well for you. Where do things look tonight? Uh, you know, uh, Lava Calcini uh, will be uh, out tonight. Uh, I just he twisted his knee in practice, but you know, he, he's all right. Nothing, uh, nothing major there. Uh, so. You know, we're going to rotate some guys. You might hear some different names uh, on the offensive line tonight as, uh, as we try to rotate and see what the best combination is going to be. You always like a challenge figuring out who's on the line each particular play. It's the Polar Bears at home tonight, season opener at home against Robert Seabird. We'll check the starting lineups and more here on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you.
Hey, Luis, will you uh, just monitor and make sure I don't have crowd noise too loud or I'm not over-modulating, something like that? Will you make sure you let me know? Ladies and gentlemen, Hi. and welcome to the historic East West Stadium for tonight's first home game of the 2023 season. Okay. Tonight's pepperoni roll bowl features the Robert C. Bird Eagles from Clarksburg, West Virginia, and your Fairmont East <coughs> Okay. <coughs> we remind all spectators that this game is competitive, but it is also an educational experience for all players. Let's wish students from both schools good luck, right. and we encourage all spectators at tonight's game to keep in mind that good sportsmanship is expected at all times. I'm doing pretty good. How about you? We ask that you show your appreciation for the students who will be taking part indirectly in tonight's game, the cheerleaders, the band, and the students who support their team at home and away. These young people play an integral part to their team's success. Thank you. Fans are reminded that only authorized field passes Tonight to from East West Stadium in Fairmont, the Polar Bears meet the Robert Seabird Flying Eagles. I'm Jeff Carpenter, Ray Frazier with me tonight for this Big Ten Conference battle, the Polar Bears and Robert Seabird. We mentioned earlier that this is a series that Fairmont has dominated. The Polar Bears have won nine straight over the Flying Eagles, and RCB has a new head coach. Austin Scott is their coach now, replacing Josh Correll, who completed his second stint as head coach for the Flying Eagles. And I had a chance to check in with him before the game to get an update on what he learned from his game last week against Kaiser. I learned that we compete, that we, we like to compete, and uh, we didn't give up. I know we got down a lot early, but, you know, I told the guys at halftime, I just expect them to compete all the way to the end and then see what the result is. So we definitely have some youth and then some inexperience, but I think the guys like to compete. You've been coaching on the defensive side of the ball for several years at RCB. Will the defense be pretty much what Fairmont fans are used to seeing? Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of much change. I mean, every year coach tweaks a little bit, but as far as our base scheme, it's pretty much the same. How about the offensive side? You're losing a quarterback who was a prolific passer for the Flying Eagles. You have Rylan Rock in at quarterback now. What do you see as, as his strengths? I think Rylan, he's growing every day. You know, I think he's just now starting to really learn exactly what we expect from him in the offense and, you know, how he controls the game. I think what sets Rylan apart a little bit is that he's a little bit more mobile guy than we've had in the past, so he can actually run the ball a little bit when we need him to. Tell me your impressions of this Fairmont team. I mean, it's a, you already know when you come to play Fairmont, it's a great program, they're physical, and they have a great scheme. You know, they, do, they play football the right way, so you know, you gotta get after them pretty quick if you wanna have a chance. You got that first game under your belt as the head coach. Does it feel any different here for the second game? It's always a little different because, you know, if you're a head coach, you got a lot more on your plate as far as operations and, you know, looking out for the kids every day. But, you know, once we get to the field, I kind of feel like I'm back back to normal. Nothing much is changing in that aspect. That's Austin Scott. He's the head coach of the Robert C. Bird Flying Eagles in his first season. He just had his first game last week as RCB lost on the road at Kaiser. And, uh, Ray, you've had a chance to put together the RCB scouting report. Let's hear it. Looking at them, uh, Jeff, it looks like to me they're going to be kind of going back and forth between under center, uh, pro style, some eye. Uh, they like to use an H back, with which they'll motion across and you know run some isolation plays. So kind of traditional, uh, you know, I formation type offense. But uh, just like the coaches said, they'll like to you know, use his mobility, the quarterback rocks mobility. So they'll. They'll move him around. They'll they'll roll him out some to uh, to try to get some easy completions. Uh, not a lot of vertical passing games, so a lot of intermediate type things. But you will see some spread. You will see some shotgun. Uh, defensively, we're going to see some four three. I think a lot of that 
Um, you know, and then the amount of safeties we're going to get is going to be dependent upon, um, you know, how many backs we have, I think, versus two back. Uh, we'll see one uh, one safety. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have one back. I think we're going to get one safety. So, uh, But I think a lot of 4-3, maybe on third down, some, some odd front. So I think that's what we'll see tonight. Last week we saw Gavin Michael have a big game. He caught his first ever touchdown pass, and I checked in with him before the game to find out what kind of a feeling he had about that. For you. Uh, it was pretty cool, you know, catching the ball and scoring, celebrating with my teammates, so pretty cool experience. How about defensively? Because you've been playing some different spots. Where do you think you're going to end up? Uh, I think I'm going to end up at middle linebacker. And what are your responsibilities there? Track the guards and just come up and hit people. So that's what I like doing, so. When you first started playing here, your older brother was quarterback, and everybody kind of thought of you as just a little brother but you've really come into your own. What's that like now to make a name for yourself? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't think I filled his shoes quite yet, but still got this year, so I'll try to get that done. Mm. Tell me what your thoughts are on this team you're a part of now. Week one in the books and a lot left to go. I think we're a pretty good team. Definitely people need to watch out for us coming up later in the season when we get the better competition, so yeah. That's Gage Michael scored his first ever touchdown reception uh, he's, he scored touchdowns before but not thrown by his quarterback thrown by the other teams and so he's a big part of the offense and he was a big part of the entire game last week right he had quite an opening night yeah definitely and I I, I think coach Bardock in the pregame uh, you know equating him to a Swiss Army knife I think that's a really good comparison because uh, he can do a little bit of everything, uh, you know, and I know he was talking about uh, what he can do on defense, but uh, let, let's not forget he also has the ability on offense to do a lot of things to help this team, and even if he needs to play quarterback, he could do that too. RCB is going to kick off, so that means that the Polar Bears will have the football first tonight. And it also means that RCB's nightmare, Dylan Hours, back to return the kick along with Cannon Dinger. You remember the miracle that Hours pulled out that averted a big upset against RCB a couple of seasons ago. And this game is just about underway. Here is the kick downfield, end over end to the far side. Dinger comes up and gets it at the 20. He runs wide to the left side. He gets to the 25, up to the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. And he's wrestled down in RCB territory inside the 45-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Polar Bears. As this game is just underway, nine seconds gone, and the Polar Bears are already in RCB territory. Yeah, great field position. Love to see you start on the other side of the 50. That's 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 a good place to start. They're going to mark it down at the 38. So the Polar Bears with great field position to start this game on the far side, running from left to right now with three receivers to the right. And here is White here, back to pass, chased out of the pocket, runs to the far side of the field, then lets one go downfield towards Michael, and he can't hang on to it at the four-yard line. If he catches it, it's a touchdown. He was behind the defenders. The pass falls incomplete. It's second and ten. Yeah, they gave it four deep covers that time. They were, didn't want to get beat deep, but still Michael found a way to get uh, behind him and uh, we almost had him. So it'll be second down, second and ten yards to go from the 38. Two receivers to the near side. Johnson and Dinger in motion. Comes Michael. And the handoff goes to Dylan Hours off the left side. He's inside the 35, the 30, the 25, down the sidelines and spun out of bounds after he picks up a polar bear first down. Yeah, they came with an overloaded blitz to the field, and uh, and we go back to the boundary. So uh, really great call right there. Uh, I don't know if it was an audible, but if it was, it was a great call. Put the ball down at the 20-yard line, so an 18-yard gain for Dylan Hours. He didn't get the chance to carry the ball much in the game last week. But it's a first down for the Polar Bears now. First down and 10. In motion comes Canfield. And here's the option right. Kept by Whitehair, and he ducks in and takes it down to about the 12-yard line. You know, Jeff, last week looking at the, at the tape, I think a lot of what our, our problem was with our offense lines, we were uh, – we were not staying on our double teams, and, and the first two plays, we've done that really well, these first first two plays. Brody Whitehair gets seven yards on that carry. Now it's second down and three from the 13-yard line. Whitehair has hours to his left. 
on this second and short play, and Brody back to pass. Looks, looks, now chased out of the pocket, runs downfield, he gets to the 10, he's at the five, he angles towards the goal line, and he gets into the end zone. It's a polar bear touchdown. It's a 13-yard run for Brody White here, and the polar bears score first and lead it six to nothing. Yeah, it was just good coverage that time, but Brody made a really good decision after looking through, going through all his progressions. He's doing that really well right now, and uh, made a good decision to run there. Cam Peschel on to attempt the extra point. Quite a night for Peschel in his first ever kicking opportunity for the Polar Bears. He was six for six. Ball down on the tee. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field, 10.51 to go, first quarter. It's Fairmont 7, RCB nothing on 93.1 WFGM. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Couldn't have started any better for the Polar Bears. First possession in RCB territory, and it and just took the Polar Bears four plays to get it into the end zone. Gavin Michael ready to kick off for Fairmont. Teased all up in the center of the field at the 40. He'll kick from left to right. And there is his kick, end over end, but short. It's going to be taken at the 15-yard line. And it's taken out over the 25 and up close to the 30. Junior Smith on the return takes it up to about the 30-yard line. And tackle on the play was made by Logan Canfield. He had several tackles last week in the game against Lewis County. Yeah, Jeff, I talked to uh, Coach Barter before the game. And, uh, you know, just as he said in the pregame, but, I mean, he, he said to me he was very pleased, very pleased with the special teams play last week. So the football at the 30, RCB's quarterback is a senior, Rylan Rock. They have a lot of underclassmen, though. And here is Rock. He tosses it to the right to Latrell Jones. And Jones looking for an opening, and he'll get back to about the line of scrimmage. And that'll be all. The ball pops loose. Polar Bears say they've got it. And the officials agree. It's Fairmont football. Yeah, that was just very well defense, very well played. Uh, we talked about last week uh, Lewis County's fullback rallying to the fullback, but that that, that right there, us, us getting to that sweep, we did a really good job. Well, fumble recovery credited to Joey Richmond. Polar Bears have the ball. 10.34 to go here in the second quarter clock. First turnover of the game. Fairmont goes first down and 10 at the 30. Empty backfield set now for Whitehair. Three receivers to the right side, two to the left. First down and 10. Brody looks to pass. Pass time, far side, complete to Michael along the sidelines, down to the 20, the 15, and is upended close to the 10-yard line. I tell you, you really see the growth of uh, Brody White here right there. They're playing a quarters coverage and didn't want to get beat deep, uh, so he went through all his progressions and then checked it down, and uh, really nice job. 20-yard pass play, ball comes down to the 10. It'll be first down and goal to go for the Polar Bears from there. Whitehair has hours behind him and at the line of scrimmage, a flag is thrown. Offsides, Offsides called RCB. against RCB, so that will take the ball down to the five-yard line. So Fairmont out now, first down, goal to go from the five. White here has Canfield to his left, back to pass, sets up, fires slant over the middle, and the pass is caught, hits up, Polar Bear touchdown. Dylan Hours catches the pass in the end zone, and the Polar Bear score again, leading at 13 to nothing. Yeah, great play design uh, by Coach Sampson. They run a switch route, and uh, and Hours has come uh, wide open. Go, 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 
Special back in to attempt the extra point. Canfield is the holder. Ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field, 9.56 to go. First quarter, fast start for the Polar Bears. It's Fairmont 14, RCB nothing on 93.1 WFGM. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Not the way the Flying Eagles wanted this game to start. A young team on the road, now down two touchdowns, and we've only played a couple of minutes. Here is Michael's end over end kick, taken by Junior Smith at the 17. He runs wide to the right, and he is hit and brought down. Hitting him first was Chris Wilson. They'll give him credit to a gain of about up to the 25-yard line. I know we said that we've been playing really good special teams, but what it is, is we've been staying in our lanes really well all the time on our kick coverage, and that takes discipline, and we've been doing that. That's just excellent special teams play. In the backfield, James McMillian for RCB along with Latrell Jones. Jones fumbled on his first carry. Actually, Jaden Hatfield is in at tailback now. First and 10 for RCB. Rocks and Smith in motion, and there's the fake and the handoff, and the Polar Bears fall on the ball and have another recovered fumble. Yeah, he just lost his footing <coughs> there and, uh, and, and, and lost the ball. Kayla Ar Arbogast was in the right place at the right time because when the player goes down before the handoff is delivered, then the ball pops free and the Polar Bears get it. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. That'll be a three-yard loss on that last play. Another turnover, 9.45 to go, and Fairmont is getting close to getting its third touchdown. Whitehair sends Navon Jones in motion. Touch pass goes to Jones, running wide to the right. He's at the 20, down to the 15, and dives close to the 13-yard line. Number 11, Navon Jones. The ball this might be coming back. Flag on the play. Brought down by number 36, James McMillan. Flags thrown at about the 20-yard line. If it's a holding penalty, the pass play will count, and it is, and there'll be a penalty assessed, and it'll be first down and about 18 for the Polar Bears. Ball comes back to the 30-yard line. First down, 18 yards to go for Fairmont Senior. Canfield, a wide out to the right side, along with Dinger, three wide outs to the left. Whitehair at quarterback on this first down play. He's back to pass, steps up in the pocket, has time, now running to the left, fires downfield. Michael all alone at the 15, the 10. He's at the five, and he takes it into the end zone. It's a polar bear touchdown. A 30-yard TD pass from Whitehair to Gavin Michael, and the polar bears strike again and lead it 20 to nothing. Yeah, great job by Whitehair stepping up in the pocket, but uh, deciding not to run and, uh, and finding Michael. Uh, had him wide open. So Gavin is doing his father a real favor because his dad has his other son, Gage, playing for Fairmont State right now, and he's watching Gavin the first half and Gage hopefully the second half. Extra point kick by Peschel is up, and it is good. Timeout with 8.56 to go in the first quarter from Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 21, RCB nothing on 93.1 WFGM. 
1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design and build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. The Polar Bears off to a fast start, leading 21 to nothing now. As the ball has really only been on about 40 yards of the field, and it's all been all in RCB territory for the entire first four minutes of the first quarter. Here's Michael's kick end over end, another short one taken at the 10 yard line. Carried out over the 15 by Jones, hit by Dinger, gets free, but then gets up to the 19 and that'll be all. That was Duarte on the return for RCB. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Flying Eagles at their own 19. Hey, we're gonna have to come up with a nickname for this kick, uh, kick coverage unit. I, I gotta figure it out, but Got to find one. Okay, that's gonna, that'll be something that you can take care of because you're going to be so relaxed this weekend. First down 10 for the Flying Eagles at their 19. They've had two turnovers on two plays. And there is the deep handoff to Jaden Hatfield. He gets over the 20 to about the 21. And Dylan Hours and Logan Canfield are right there. But RCB probably breathing a sigh of relief because it's the first play they've run that hasn't had a turnover at the end of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a young football team, so they want to try to find just a way to get a first down just to kind of get something going first. So now it'll be second down and seven yards to go. The ball at the 22-yard line in Flying Eagle territory. Quarterback hands it off to the fullback, and it is taken out over the 25 to about the 26. And it's going to bring up a third down. Number 33, Mecca the Mecca, the ball carrier. Third down and about three yards to go. Right down by number three, Karen Buda. Buda. Quarterback under center, third down play. Tailback Hatfield gets it, and Hatfield is hit behind the line of scrimmage. He has no place to go. Polar Bears on in quickly, Arbogast there. Loss on the play, and a putting situation for the Flying Eagles. Yeah, just way too much penetration for them to get anything going there. The quarterback, Rock, is also the punter. A lot of times, he'll just line up under center or to out of the shotgun and do a rugby punt. But this time, he's actually set up in punt formation. Taking the long snap over his head, he goes back and controls it and then punts it away and does a nice job getting it downfield. It'll go out of bounds, but he was in big trouble with that punt that was sailing over his head back to about the 10-yard line. But you could see his athleticism one-handing it and then quickly being able to turn his body around and punt the ball away. Ball's going to be set down at the 41 yard line in RCB territory. That's where the Polar Bears get it with 6.44 on the clock at the change of possession. So this is Fairmont's fourth possession and all four have started in RCB territory. Good for the scoring, but bad for your stats. Wide out to the right side is Dinger. White here in the pistol. He sends Jones in motion, and he gives it to Hours off the left side. A lot of running room inside the 35 to the 30, and then struggles down to about the 28-yard line. Tay, we look a lot better up front. Uh, last week, I talked to Coach Bigelow about I think we were leaving our double teams too early trying to get to linebackers. Tonight, we're staying on those double teams longer uh, before releasing to a linebacker, so it looks a lot better. Definitely a lot better. Dylan Hours has carried the ball twice for 31 yards, and that's 
more yardage than he had in the whole game last week. First down and 10 at the RCB 28. In motion, Michael. Hand off to Hours. Dylan running up the middle, and he'll take it inside the 25 down to about the 24-yard line. Stop on the play was made by RCB's Gail Adams. Second down and six after that four-yard gain. Gavin Michael has caught two passes for 50 yards tonight. Dylan Hours has one. Navon Jones won. And last week's leading receiver, Cannon Dinger, hasn't had his hands on a ball yet. Second down and six from the RCB 24. Fairmont 21. The Flying Eagles nothing. Midway through the first quarter. Here's Whitehair faking it. Passing downfield to Dinger. He catches it at the 10. Angles down to the 5. Still on his feet and goes down inside the 5 yard line. Jeff, I saw that one coming a mile away. It looked like uh, Dinger kind of motioned to uh, Whitehair because he had single coverage all the way and uh, that was not a favorable matchup for the Flying Eagles. 20 yard pass play and Brody Whitehair has been very efficient tonight. 5 of 6 for 77 yards. And he's thrown one touchdown pass. First down goal from the four. Navon Jones in motion. And here's White here on a keeper off the right side. Gets down inside the five, and he takes it into the end zone. It's up. Polar Bear touchdown. Brody Whitehair scores his second TD of the night. And the Polar Bear score again and lead it 27 to nothing. Yeah, it looked like we should have had somebody that should have been in pitch relationship on that option, but... Uh, Offensive line did a really good job getting a hat on a hat and, uh, and getting movement, so pretty well blocked. Cam Peschel on to attempt the extra point. Probably thinking, I didn't think football would have given me this many opportunities, but a soccer player who's turned kicker this year, his extra point is up and it is good. Time out on the field, five minutes to go in the first quarter, and the score is Fairmont Senior 28, Robert Seabird nothing, a 93.1 WFGM. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Fairmont Senior ready to kick off, and Cam Peschel is going to kick for the Bears. Tees it up in the center of the field. Right-footed soccer-style kicker downfield, and it's going to be picked up at the 17, but there were flags where the ball was kicked off. The Polar Bears were offsides. Cam's legs are a little shorter than Gavin's, and he takes more steps, and I think that was the difference because with Gavin, they hadn't been offsides. <laughs> So that takes the ball back to the 35-yard line, and the Polar Bears will kick it again. Just the second penalty against the Polar Bears tonight. I like that. That's uh, that's a big improvement. Uh, you know, playing a, a like to see a clean game tonight, and so far I think we're doing that pretty well. Duarte is back as the deepest returner. And this kick is better than the last one. It goes down to the 10, rolls inside the five, and is picked up at the one yard line by Duarte. He's hit and he's going to be brought down inside the 10. Whoever would have thought you get a five yard penalty and what does your kicker do? He kicks it down inside the 10. Number two, Duarte. And now they're in worse shape than they would have been if they'd taken the first one. Number 15, Tristan Will. So the ball comes out to about the eight. First and 10 from the eight yard line. And that's where RCB will go with 452 remaining here in the first quarter and Fairmont leading 28 nothing. Tavion Thornton is a corner on the near side. He's playing right up in the face of the wide out for the Flying Eagles and that's Kobe Duarte. Quarterback Ryland Rock out of the shotgun. 
and he's rolling to the near side. Quick pass, and it is incomplete. Nice hit put on the intended receiving Duarte by Thornton, and it's incomplete. Yeah, Thornton did a nice job on that on that play, uh, breaking on the ball, uh, his little rollout, and uh, he read it right away and uh, did a nice job breaking on the ball. Thornton is a new player to the team, but he's a senior, but he is probably the he's the the most outgoing player on the team. Everybody loves Tavion. It's going to be second down and 10 from the eight yard line. Three wide outs to the left side and again, Rock is in the shotgun. This time he hands it off to Hatfield. Hatfield off the right side is grabbed and brought down by Trevor Bigelow. Also helping out was Tucker Hayhurst. Let's see where they mark it down. Maybe a gain of about a yard on the play. Yeah, nice job by Hayhurst and Bigelow on that play. Uh, really leveraging, using your hands like you should as a defensive lineman, getting off a block. Uh, Hayhurst in particular, I saw on that play, did a really nice job. Kind of give him actually three yards. So it will be third down and seven. The ball comes out to the 11. Big third down play. RCB desperately needs to convert this first down. Here is Rock rolling to the near side, wanting to pass, getting pressure downfield. The pass is incomplete. Nice defensive pressure by the Polar Bears there. Canfield defending along with Cannon Dinger. It's going to be fourth down and seven. And Boda really closed on that quarterback that time in a hurry. <laughs> Taryn Boda, that's kind of a new name, but it's not a surprise because the coach has said this kid is going to be a big time player for the Polar Bears and he's already become that. I like him, he plays really hard. Plays the game the way he should. Boda is a sophomore, 5'8", 170 pounds. Fourth down seven and from the 11 yard line, the Flying Eagles are going to punt again. Rock stands at his goal line, punts it away. End over end, short, it'll hit at the 30 and it's picked up on the bounce by Dinger at the 40 and he runs into his own guy and goes down at about the 36 yard line. But credit Dinger for picking it up because if he didn't, it probably would have rolled to about midfield. But instead, the Polar Bears will have it at the 36-yard line with 3.50 on the first quarter clock. Polar Bears are four for four. They've scored on all four possessions. This is the fourth straight to start in RCB territory. Dinger wide to the near side. Polar Bears have two running backs now in the game. Chris Wilson and Dylan Hours behind the quarterback Whitehair. First down and 10. And there is the fake to Wilson and Whitehair. Pitches it to Hours. Hours off the left side. He gets down to the 35 and down close to the 32-yard line before he's wrapped up and brought down. Yeah, I think we missed a blocking assignment on that play. Uh, they brought a little uh, uh, inside pressure, and, uh, and we didn't pick that up, and that caused uh, Birdie to have to get rid of it a little sooner than he wanted to. It'll be a gain of four yards on the play. Second down and six coming up for the Polar Bears. Ball at the 32, and timeout called by the Flying Eagles. Timeout on the field with 3.18 to go. RCB. First quarter, Polar Bears 28, RCB nothing on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. solid. Fairmont 5 of 6 passing tonight. Dinger wide to the near side. 
Two wide outs to the left. In motion comes Navon Jones from left to right. And Wilson gets the handoff off the right side. Wilson runs into his own man, gets it down to the 25, and then stretches down to about the 23-yard line. Tackle on the play was made by RCB's Gail Adams. Well blocked play. He wasn't even touched until he uh, he was about five, six yards down the field. So uh, very well blocked play. Number 21, Chris Wilson. The ball carrier. Wilson runs well. He's a junior who's never played varsity football before. It's first down and 10. Polar Bears with their seventh first down, and we're in the first quarter. All at the 24. Finger has a running back on either side of him. He wants to pass now. Sets up, fires the ball downfield, and the pass is intercepted. Junior Smith has it. Out over the 10, the 15, and up close to the 20-yard line. Junior Smith gets RCB's biggest first quarter play. A pass interception, and the Flying Eagles have the ball at their own 20-yard line with 2.34 to go in the opening quarter. Yeah, it's just it was a really nice play. I mean, we picked the blitz up pretty well, and, uh, you know, credit for Brady for standing in there uh, to the last second. Uh, they just made a play. So the Flying Eagles now have the football. Unfortunately for them, they get an interception, but they're still deep in their own territory with the ball at the 20. RCB does not have a first down yet, and their positive yardage is negligible. First and 10, Latrell Jones, tailback, gets the handoff, and he's hit. As soon as he gets the ball, Trevor Bigelow brings him down at the 20-yard line. Yeah, just really, really nice play. Uh, just, again, getting off a block uh, like you're supposed to, using your hands. Second down and 10 yards to go. Lava Kakini. Twisted his knee in practice this week. He's not playing for the Polar Bears tonight. R replaced offensively by Tucker Hayhurst. Defensively, the front for the Polar Bears is Joey Richmond, Kyle Arbogast, and Trevor Bigelow. Second and 10 for the Flying Eagles. Up under center is Rock. Hands it to Jones again, and Jones is hit. He has no place to go. Arbogast tripped him up first, and then there was lots of help coming behind. Yeah, Arbogast is a, is a very tough object to move in there and uh, did a nice job of uh, playing his responsibility with, uh, on that play. One yard gain, so it's at the 21 now, and it's going to be third and nine for the Flying Eagles. 1.30 to go here in the first quarter. Seems like this first quarter has been as long as a first half. <laughs> yes, it has. Flying Eagles send a wide out to the near side. That's Duarte. Quarterback Rock under center, gives it to the fullback, and there's no place for him to go. Matanamiki with the ball, and he's brought down by Dakota Nisley, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. That was a loss of one on the play, and a punting situation. Yeah, just watching the front three of, uh, of, of Richmond, Arbogast, and uh, Bigelow, they're doing a really good job of using their hands, hand placement, all those things that Coach Phillips likes to see them do, and. Uh, and leveraging uh, the blocker. Nice job. Rylan Rock is the putter. He's also the quarterback, but he's putted more than he's thrown the ball. His putt is away, short, far side of the field. Now it hits a 40, picked up on the bounce by Dinger at the 48. He's the 50, the 45, it's the 40, room. the 30, down to the 25, and inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line. Cannon was just itching to get his hands on the ball, and it wasn't an easy one to return because it was bouncing, but he picked it up at his own 48 and took it down to the RCB 22. So that's a 30-yard punt return with 31 seconds to go in the first quarter. Digger wide right, two receivers left. Michael and Jones in the backfield, Wilson and Hours along with White here who's at the quarterback spot. Arbogast, the center. Hayhurst playing left tackle, left guard is Joey Richmond, Angeline right guard, Bigelow right tackle. Here's the snap, and Whitehair wants to pass. Steps up in the pocket now. Flags are down, passes downfield to Denger, catch it, or to Michael rather, catches at the five, takes it down to the goal line, but there are flags on the play. Back at about the 29 yard line. And this might be holding. Holding is the call against Fairmont, Fairmont Senior. Senior. You really could tell that was coming. So I didn't get too excited when I saw Michael on the far sidelines catching that pass. 
I had a feeling we were going to be making the walk backwards, and that's the case. I know that's coming back uh, now, but uh, but I, I tell you, I, I really have been impressed early on this season with uh, with Whitehair's decision making. He's he's really growing as a quarterback. You can just see the you know when he needs to check it down, he's checking it down. When he has the vertical route, he takes it. When he when he needs to run, he runs. Uh, so I, I think he's he's coming a long way uh, in his decision making. You can just really tell. Clock is turning. We're down to eight seconds to go in the first quarter. First down, 20 yards to go for the Polar Bears, and time runs out at the end of the first quarter. So the first quarter has come to an end from East West Stadium in Fairmont with a score. The Fairmont Polar Bears 28, Robert Seabird nothing on 93.1 WFGM. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. A big first quarter for Fairmont Senior has the Bears leading RCB 28 to nothing as we start the second quarter. Football at the 32. The Bears have to get down to the 12 for a first down. Now there's a timeout called at the line of scrimmage. RCB didn't like what it saw. Timeout on the field, Flying Eagles. 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. It's Fairmont 28, RCB nothing on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. The Polar Bears with the ball. Brody Whitehair on an option pitch. Gets it to Hours. Hours down to the 30. Tripped up and goes down at about the 24-yard line. Junior Smith made a nice tackle for the Flying Eagles, stopping Hours after a gain of just about six yards on the play. And it's going to be second down for the Polar Bears and about 13, so give him seven on that carry. Yeah, well ex executed play there, Jeff. They, uh, they maintain the pitch relationship like they should and uh, did a nice job on that play making the right decision. Second down, 13 for the Polar Bears. Football marked at the 24-yard line. Right here, back to pass. Sets up, fires to the far side. The pass is caught by Damani Johnson. Takes it inside the five and into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. Brody Whitehair to Damani Johnson. A 24-yard TD pass. And the Polar Bears lead it 34 to nothing. Yeah, I like these two back sets. And when they bring the backs out of the backfield, they're really easy to get lost. Plus, they get, lo they get matched up on linebackers. And it's a really favorable matchup a lot of times. And that's what happened on that play. Um, uh, when we just scored her there. So Damani Johnson catches his first ever TD pass, and the kick by Peschel is up and good. 
Timeout on the field with 11-10 to go in the second quarter. Fairmont 35, RCB nothing on 93.1 WFGM. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Come right to left. And here is his end over end kick, a short kick, and it is going to be taken by Junior Smith, and he takes it out over the 30, 35, and up to about the 37 yard line, maybe the 38. Call it the 38 yard line, and it'll be first down and 10 for the Flying Eagles from there. 11.04 on the clock here in the second quarter. Fairmont Senior, 35, and RCB nothing. Last year when the two teams played, Polar Bears won the game by a 36 to nothing score in Clarksburg. First and 10 play. Handoff goes to the deep back and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. No place at all to go. And that was Junior Smith carrying. They may get him back to the line, but that'll be all. So no gain on the play. You know, you hear people say making the play without making the play. Uh, Arbogast made that play even though uh, he didn't officially get credit with the tackle. He, he pressed the center back about three or four yards and created space for the linebacker to fill. Nice job. Dakota and Isley into the game for the Polar Bears along with Jay Papali, sophomore. Second down and 10 for the Flying Eagles. Rock wants to pass to the far side. The pass is caught at about the 43-yard line by Smith, but quickly there for the Polar Bears is Wagner on the stop. That's Jordan Wagner. He's a junior. Well, that'll be a five-yard pass play. And that's the first pass completion of the night for RCB. Third down, five yards to go. Inside 10 minutes here in the second quarter, Rock wants to pass, getting pressure off his back foot, and the pass is incomplete at about the 50-yard line. It was intended for Jones, but the Polar Bears had good defensive pressure on, and Rock was getting pressure as he threw it, and it's incomplete. Fourth down coming up for RCB. Yeah, it was just a bull rush on the edge by uh, Bigelow and uh, just overpowered the tackle on that play. So, Rock will punt. There's the rugby punt, comes to the near side of the field, and it's a short punt. Hits at the 43, takes a polar bear roll, and it's going to be down to the 47 in Fairmont territory. But that is the first time tonight the polar bears have the football on their own side of the 50. And the score indicates that. 35 nothing. This will be the polar bear's seventh possession already in this game. And Fairmont has scored on five of its first six. And they were close to scoring on the one they didn't. It was just a turnover on an interception as the Polar Bears were driving. First down and 10 now from their own 47. Two receivers each side. Cannon Dinger goes in motion. Touch pass to Dinger. Running behind Dylan Hours. He gets to the 50. Down to the 45. Flags are down. Comes back this way. Then heads to the sidelines. And he might as well go down because there's a flag on the play. Back at about the 49-yard line in RCB territory on the run. Yeah, it looked like it came in kind of late. Referee stands with his foot on the 49, so it's most likely going to be a holding penalty against the Polar Bears. Holding, 
on team. That actually is going to be a four yard pass play and then the penalty is assessed. So Dinger will get a little gain on that one. And it's going to be first down and 16 for the Bears now with three wide outs to the left side, ball back at the 41. There's a little swing pass coming to Michael, but it's low and he picks it up on the hop, incomplete. Pass intended for number 14, Gavin Michael falls incomplete. Yeah, I think he, uh, uh, Michael had some green grass in front of him who he would have completed that. Or actually turf, I should say. Yeah, <laughs> we don't talk about grass anymore. <laughs> Seven of 10 passing for Whitehair, 105 yards tonight. And he's thrown three touchdown passes. Second down, 16. Clock turned down to 9, 10. It stopped on that incomplete pass. Hours goes in motion from left to right. Whitehair looks to pass, looks right now, throws down the sidelines for Hours, who catches it at the 30. He's down to the 25, still runs at the 15. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He's into the end zone. Hits up, Polar Bear touchdown. It's a 59-yard TD pass from Whitehair to Hours. And the Polar Bears score again and lead it 41 to nothing. Yeah, it was obviously we were in zone that time. We motioned across. Nobody went uh, with the motion man, so uh, we just had a wheel route up the uh, the sideline and uh, nice, nice completion and, uh, and and just a great finish by ours to get into the end zone. Peschel on to attempt the extra point. Canfield to hold. Low snap. Canfield gets it down. The kick is up and the kick is good. Time out on the field with 8.55 left in the first half. It's the Polar Bears 42, RCB nothing on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. CB team. They've got a lot of freshmen and a lot of sophomores in their lineup. Here's Special kicking off end over end, but short. Taken on the bounce back at the 20-yard line. Junior Smith has it, and he reverses fields and gets it up to the 25, the 30, and he's going to be brought down close to the 35-yard line. Number three, Junior Smith on the return. Tavion Thornton and Taryn Boda in on the stop for Fairmont Senior. And number 21, Chris Wilson. It'll be first down and 10. RCB, 8.42 to go. Second quarter. Brody Whitehair has completed 8 of 11 passes for 164 yards. And four touchdowns here in the first half. Rock out of the shotgun on this first down play. In motion comes Smith, and he gets the handoff, and he is thrown to the turf by Damani Johnson. Nice defensive play by the Polar Bears, Johnson. Yeah, you hear the terminology a lot of times in football, setting the edge, and that's what Dawson did on that play. Did a nice job of coming up uh, and being real strong on the uh, perimeter that time. One yard gain. It'll be second down and nine for RCB. The Flying Eagles do not have a first down yet. James McMillian comes in to run at the fullback spot. Their quarterback, Rock, is in the shotgun. Second and nine. 
Gives it to Jaden Hatfield, wide to the left side. Hatfield gets around the edge. He gets out over the 45, the 50, down the sidelines at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone for an RCB touchdown. It'll be a 64-yard run by Jaden Hatfield, and the Flying Eagles get on the scoreboard for the first time this season. Yeah, they had us uh, shifting uh, just at the right time uh, to the left and then uh, to our left, and then they ran to their left. So it was a really good call. Jaden Hatfield is a freshman, 5'10", 170-pounder, and he showed that speed along the sidelines because it looked as though the Polar Bears had an angle to get him, but he just outran it. So the Flying Eagles now will go for the two-point conversion. Smith takes the ball. Lofts went into the end zone, and the pass is dropped in the end zone. The two-point conversion fails. That was Rylan Rock, who's typically the quarterback. They try to get him the ball for the two. Doesn't work, and there's timeout on the field. 7.45 to go second quarter. It's Fairmont 42, RCB 6, a 93.1 WFGM. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Kickoff from left to right. End over end, short kick, and it is going to be taken at the 20-yard line by Hours. Hours cuts up the center of the field at the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. Down the sidelines at the 40. He's at the 30, the 20, 15, 10, 5. Hits a polar bear touchdown. Dylan Hours on an 80-yard kickoff return, and the polar bears score again and lead it 48 to 6. I think they're having nightmares again with him returning kicks. <laughs> yeah, I know they don't like it when he returns kicks. That was a, just a great return. You're referring to that game two years ago yes. when the Polar Bears fell behind with a minute 27 to go and the Polar Bears' future on the line as RCB was about ready to eliminate the Polar Bears, but Fairmont's hours returned a kickoff over 90 yards to put the Bears in front and win the game. Peschel ready to attempt the extra point from right to left. It is up. It is good. Nothing to it for Cam Peschel. 7.30 to go. Second quarter. The Polar Bears 49. RCB 6 on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives. And we want to recognize the integral part of our operation. The LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Smith, Kobe Duarte back deep, and Duarte goes back, lets it bounce the five, and it goes, doesn't go into the end zone, so he has to pick it up. Gets out over the 10, up to the 15, and then fights his way up close to the 18 yard line. Jordan Wagner and 
Jackson Lowther in on the tackle for the Polar Bears. Sometimes when you see a delay like that with the ball uh, being returned, sometimes you see people get out of lanes in their lanes, but we're staying in our lanes really well even on that play. Yeah, the plan was by Duarte was just to let it go in the end zone, but it just stopped rolling and he had to pick it up. First down 10 from the 18. Brock is in the shotgun. Hatfield beside him. And now RCB has to call a timeout. Timeout Flying Eagles, 7.22 to go. Second quarter, Fairmont 49, RCB 6 on 93.1 WFGM. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. And the Flying Eagles have the football in their own territory at the 18, first down and 10. Ryland Rock hands it off to Smith, wanting ride to the left side, and he's grabbed and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Number three on the carry. Making the tackle for the Polar Bears was Logan Canfield. There's a flag on the play. And now they wave the flag off. No flag on the play. So the ball will be set down at the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be second down and 10, or yeah, second and 10 from the 18 yard line. No gain on that last play. Wide out to the near side. They have two. Now they shift the backfield. Snap comes to Rock, handoff to Latrell Jones, and Jones dives to the 20, and that'll be all. Number one, Jones. Reed Walker. Lister was in the area, but it was more as though Jones just went diving down at about the 20, so he'll gain two, and it's going to be third down and eight. This is so critical right now for some of these younger guys that are getting in the game to uh, to get quality reps against uh, you know, first-team competition. This is a really, really good experience for them right now. Riley Green is along the front line for the Polar Bears, along with Lister, Papali. So those are all replacements. Snap goes over the head of Rock. He runs back to get it. He's inside the five-yard line trying to get back to the line of scrimmage and more. He's hit at the 13-yard line and brought down. So Rock did a good job of recovering after what could have been a devastating loss. Boda brings him down, and it's going to be fourth and long as the ball is going to be marked back at the 13-yard line. That's a uh, that's a bad snap in your stats. You don't charge that loss to the quarterback. So Rock will be doing the punting, another bad snap, and the ball falls to the turf, and there's a flag on the play at the line of scrimmage, and RCB is very happy about that. False start against the Flying Eagles. That'll take them back five yards, back to the eight-yard line. That's been a plus for RCB tonight. Penalties have not been an issue. So the ball is at the eight. It's fourth down. The first down marker is all the way at the 28 yard line. So obviously a punting situation now. Rock stands just at about his goal line. And there have been some questionable snaps and now time runs out and there's a flag on the play as RCB has taken up too much time. 
So that'll take the ball back to the four yard line. So that's making it just even that more difficult to punt the ball. A lot less room. Clock down to 4.57. Halftime can't come fast enough for RCB tonight. Trailing the Polar Bears 49 to 6. So we're ready to close out the first half. Rock ready to punt. Polar Bears have Navon Jones and Wilson deep to return, and Wilson will catch it at the 35, runs wide to the right. He's down to the 30, the 25. He's at the 20, the 15, and run down inside the 10-yard line along the sidelines. Chris Wilson with a very nice punt return, and the Polar Bears have the football deep in RCB territory with 4.42 to go in the first half. They're going to mark him inside the 10-yard line at the 9. So it'll be first down and goal to go for the Polar Bears at the nine yard line. Damani Johnson in the backfield. Whitehair the quarterback. Hayhurst and Richmond along the offensive line with Angeline and Bigelow. The, the center is Arbogast. First and goal from the nine. Here's Whitehair giving it to Johnson, Johnson off the right side, takes it inside the five, and he takes the ball down close to the goal line, and he is eight, into, the end zone. Johnson, into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. Damani Johnson takes it in from eight yards out, and the Polar Bears now lead it 55 to six. Yeah, and I see him get in the end zone as we try to develop some depth at, line, at uh, running back. On to attempt the extra point, number 44, Cam Peschel. Pesha will kick from right to left. Canfield holding. Good snap. Ball down. Kick up. Kick good. 4.31 to go in the first half from Fairmont. The score, the Fairmont Polar Bears 56, RCB 6 on 93.1 WFGM. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. The Polar Bears leading 56 to six with 431 left in the first half and Peschel ready to kick off again. Peschel's kick is end over end and it is going to be taken at the 10 yard line and that is Duarte with it and he takes it up close to the 35. He was hit at the 35 yard line by two, Polar Walter Bears, Junior. Gabe Muller, right freshman. Ball's at the 35, Number first down and 10. First and 10. Try to give you the players in the game for the Polar Bears. Tanner Woodman is in the secondary, along with Rudy Carrillo. At a linebacker spot is Max Bracero. It's first down and 10 for the Flying Eagles. Rock up under center. And there is the handoff to Hatfield. Hatfield hit by Papali, but he does manage to get up to about the 40 yard line. Number 24, Jane Hatfield, the ball carrier. So it'll be a pickup of about five yards on the play. And it'll be second down and five. That freshman Hatfield gonna have a lot of yardage tonight. He has 75 now. Of course. The bulk of that coming on that one yard, or that one play, the 64 yard run, but playing against Polar Bear Reserves, probably gonna get a chance to have a big night. And here the handoff goes to Latrell Jones, and Jones takes it over the 50 down to the 49 yard line. Tackle and the play by the Polar Bears, Deshaun Floyd.
Deshaun, brother of the Stills boys. And of course, it was a big night for Dante back on Tuesday when he was officially a member of the Arizona Cardinals. Yes, it was. Major congratulations to him. That is absolutely awesome. Junior Smith goes in motion and there is the fake pitch and the handoff goes to the fullback and the football is carried down to about the 45 yard line. Another nice gain. That was James McMillian with the carry and he'll take it down to the 46. It's going to be second down and about three. Woodman makes the tackle for the Polar Bears. He's freshman backup quarterback. Second and three for the Flying Eagles. Tailback gets the ball this time, and Latrell Jones is hit and goes down. And that was a nice defensive play by Jackson Lowther. And is he fired up about that play? Yeah, that was a good form in that tackle. Is this the uh, basically looked like a wrestling double leg takedown? A gain of a yard, and it's third down and two. But Lowther was reacting as though that was the game-saving tackle at the end of the game, but he's getting some early taste of football here tonight. Handoff goes to the tailback, and Latrell Jones carries it inside the 35 the down to about the 33-yard line. Brought down by number 40, Max Bracero. Bracero makes the tackle. Ball is down at the 34-yard line. So Latrell Jones with a successful run and RCB has another first down. It's Flying Eagles third of the night. First and 10, 154 to go on the clock here in the second quarter. Smith comes in motion and gets the toss running wide to the right side, gets to the corner and then is pushed out of bounds by Bracero. Number three, Smith the ball carrier. Down at about the 30, so he's going to get four and it'll be second down and six. RCB running a lot of players. Don't think they really still yet know exactly who their players are going to be this season. They're running a lot of guys in the backfield, trying to get everybody to fall into place. Second down and six from the 30 yard line. Handoff goes to Hatfield off the left side and Hatfield sees some open space and then is brought down at about the 26. So he's going to get good yardage down to the 26 yard line and it's going to be third down and about a yard to go. Game clock down to a minute 20. RCB would love to get this ball in the end zone. Duarte is a split end to the right side and the quarterback Rock hands it to Latrell Jones. Jones up the middle is hit by Woodman, breaks free and takes it down close to the 15 yard line. Number 24, half of the ball carrier. Initial hit by number 27, Tanner Woodman. So it's another first, first down, down for the Flying Eagles. Eagles. And we're down to 50 seconds to go. RCB with a football. And the Flying Eagles don't have any timeouts left. Rock up under center, tosses it to the left to Jones. Jones with room to the, down the sidelines inside the 10 and then pushed out of bounds inside the five yard line. Jones, the ball carrier, brought down by number 40, Bracero. So it's going to be first down and goal to go for RCB. And they're going to mark the football down at about the three yard line. First and goal, Robert C. Byrne. Yeah, they'll probably have to have a couple plays called here because they, they won't have a lot of time. 32 seconds on the clock. First and goal from the three yard line. Rock under center, gives it to the fullback. McMillian off the right side and he is stood up and brought down. Bracero in on the tackle, nicely to help out. And Lau, they're also there. Down to 20 seconds to go. McMillian, the ball carrier. The ball is at the one yard line. They quickly come to the line of scrimmage. High formation. Jones gets the handoff, dives down to the goal line, and he's going to be short, and they're not going to have time to run another play. Third down, and the clock will run out at the one yard line for the Flying Eagles. A nice hustle play by Nisley. 
So the first half comes to a close from East West Stadium in Fairmont. The home opener for the Polar Bears and the score at the half is Fairmont Senior 56, Robert Seabird 6 on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. City National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand. With favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings, starting at $7.99. Or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> you have a goal. You know what you want. Start with us. New River Community and Technical College, your community college. Take classes online or in a classroom in Beaver, Lewisburg, Summersville, or Princeton. Or step outside the classroom in one of our technical or health programs. Find flexible and affordable options to help you reach your goal. It's closer than you think when you start with us. New River Community and Technical College. Apply today. It's halftime at the stadium in Fairmont. We were excited to play the home opener tonight, a Thursday night. I've always said the only time I like Thursday night games is Friday, the day after, because <laughs> you're finished and everybody else is playing. But that, that one day short always seems to be a big deal. The Polar Bears, though, aren't playing like it's a big deal to have one day short to get ready for this one because they have looked much better tonight than they did last week at Lewis County. They have, and, you know, we, as we talked at the end of the game last week, um, you know, there are, and, and Coach Bardick said it in the pregame, I mean, there, there was some sloppiness to the game last week, which is kind of what you expect in the first game, but I really like how we came out and took control right away, and, uh, you know, I think we've looked pretty, pretty good on both sides of the ball and, and special teams as well. Very efficient. You, you take a look at the passing game, uh, you know, you get so spoiled. I mean, the last decade or two of polar bear football the quarterbacks and the receivers have been so good that you almost take it for granted and then sometimes when you you play someone else and you see it's not as easy for everybody to throw the ball and you you have to remember that you're watching elite athletes for the polar bears at the quarterback and receiver positions and fairmont's been blessed in that those positions for for many years and it's the same thing this season uh, Brody uh, in his second season as a quarterback, really his his third. He played a few games as a freshman, but then was injured. But this is really his second full year. He's really matured, and you, as you mentioned earlier, he's he, showing. He has, Jeff, and and I, you know, I really got a chance to look at the uh, the tape a little closer. And uh, you know, one of the things I was trying to say earlier on, I didn't have a lot of time to say it, but just the things that I've seen in his game that, uh, you know, they're really impressive to me is that he's really going through his progressions. He's not, he's, uh, you know, he's making sure before he checks it down, he goes through everything. Or if he runs, he makes sure that, you know, whereas in the past, maybe he might have taken off a little sooner. He makes sure that he has went through everything. And even tonight, you see, he's kind of, you know, went laterally to keep, you know, a play alive behind the line of scrimmage so that he can still 
uh, buy some time for the, uh, you know, for his receiver. But, um, you know, I, I just I, I like the decision making he's make he's he's making. And I think he's standing tall in the pocket. He's doing all the things. I think his drops are really good. He's he's not getting too deep on his drops. I think that's something else that's really helping him. So I, I just I just think there's a lot of positives so far, and it really comes down to decision making. He's always had the arm talent. He's always had those things, but you just really see the progression, and it's just getting a year older. I mean, you just see it. I mean, it, it, he's 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 just becoming more. I think he's he's calmer uh, in the pocket. You can just see it. I always wonder at the quarterback and the receiver positions because sometimes, you know, all teams go through it. You have to replace the guy before, and sometimes that's hard. RCB's going through it now yeah. because they had George as their quarterback, and he was a really good passer. He threw for over 2,000 yards last year. He's, he's, he was very good. Well, they have to replace him, and it's not easy. And we are used to seeing the polar bears just seem to reload at that quarterback position. It is. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. I mean, if you really go back, and, and you can go even as far back to uh, – a teammate that I played with at Fairmont State that played here that a lot of people know about, Jared Ferguson. I mean, you go all the way back to him, and then you go through all the all the quarterbacks that have come through this school. Um, it's amazing. You you, know, you kind of say every year, well, when's it going to run out? When's it going to run out? And uh, then the next one comes and kind of carries the mantle and carries the torch, and and, uh, and Brody's no different. I mean, he's, uh, you know, obviously he's nowhere finished. I mean, he's only – a junior. I mean, so he's 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 just going to keep getting better, and so uh, you know, just really like to see. But I I really see the growth. Like I said, I mean, I really watched that tape last week, and I was really impressed. I mean, he just he's making good decisions. He's protecting the football. I mean, the interception tonight, but uh, you know, it was just the guy made a play. I mean, it's going to happen. But I, I really like the decision making. He's making good decisions. There's a group of kids that puts in a lot of work during football season, and it's not the football team, but it's the Polar Bear Band, and the band is performing here at halftime, their first halftime show, and of course the home fans enjoying it. What we're going to do is we're going to go down on the field and pick up just a little bit of music from the Polar Bear Marching Band at halftime with Fairmont leading 56 to six. That's the Polar Bear Band, and it's halftime at East West Stadium in Fairmont. It's been a big first half for the home team. The score at the half is the Fairmont Polar Bears 56, Robert Seabird 6, and we'll check the halftime stats and more when the halftime show continues on 93.1 WFGM. Got it, thank you.
Polar Bear Marching Band. It's my favorite part of halftime. It's the Ask Ray any question you can think of. And uh, we were a little easy on him last week because it was the first game. But now it is actually game week. And yeah. talking about Ray Frazier, in case you are unaware, Ray's son, uh, Zach, is the Mountaineer center. And not only is he the center for the Mountaineers, but he's like one of the very best centers in the entire country in college football. I can say that. Uh, but that's uh, that's a legitimate statement because everybody knows that. So we've got that out of the way. Now tell me now, uh, how are you feeling as you get ready to watch Zach in action against Penn State come Saturday night? I'm just they're really excited. I mean, it's uh, it's going to be an incredible environment. Uh, you know, I mean, it probably, they're saying probably about 106, 107,000 people. So. Uh, you know, that's that's something that you want to play in. You want to play in that type of environment. I guess it's a helmet stripe, but uh, the game they're same, but uh, it basically, for all intents and purposes, should be a pretty much a whiteout. So it's it's going to be uh, going to be interesting. Tell me about Zach's personality now in a game like this, because you obviously know him better than anyone. Mm -hmm. He's playing in a big game, mm -hmm. season opener, and a lot is expected of him. And he's playing in one of the most hostile places he'll play. How is he going to react to that? I, I think very calmly. I mean, that, that's something that he's always been able to do. Uh, you know, I, I just, I, you know, people ask him, like, you know, I, I think you got to ask in the media, how's he going to sleep? He's going to sleep just fine because he'll, he'll be as prepared as he needs to be. Um, full confidence in him, full confidence in, in everybody, all of his teammates. Um, you know, so I, I just I, I think he has the ability to uh, to, to remain calm, but uh, but I'm, I can tell you he's very excited and uh, he's, he's ready to go. How often do you get a chance to talk with him? And when you do, do you talk about the game coming up? We talk. I mean, throughout the week. I mean, we'll we'll talk a little bit here and there. But uh, you know, I I, I kind of. You know, it's kind of like even like when we go play golf. I mean, a lot of times, you know, it's just we, we go and play golf and, and we try not to talk about football unless, you know, he brings it up. So, um, you know, I, I mean, we, we will a little bit here and there, but not not not, not too much. I mean, I, I, I want him to be able to focus on it, and he knows what he's got to do. When we talk about center, you and I had this discussion uh, a week ago about all of the responsibilities of the center. Mm -hmm. You played that spot yeah. yourself. So yeah. you know very well, yeah. and and I think it's probably maybe even become more complex now. It has. There is a lot that's in his role. A lot yeah. of people think, well, the center snaps the ball on the right count. Yeah. That's probably the easiest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot to it. I mean, I think a lot of people uh, may not realize all the responsibility that comes with it. Uh, you know, I mean, you hear all the time being able to ID who the Mike linebacker is and. You know, a lot of people might not understand why that's so important, but it is important because that's where the play starts. That's, you know, that's that's where everybody's working from. And if you don't do that correctly, then it throws everything else off. You know, protections are very important because if, you know, if you have a protection that, uh, you know, you need to slide a certain way and you slide the wrong way. I mean, those are all things that you have to make, uh, make those decisions. And a lot of times you have to make them uh, very quickly in a quick, timely manner, and then oh, by the way, you got to block a 315-pound uh, nose tackle. So, and when you see <laughs> you see the center come to the line of scrimmage, and before he gets down, he's pointing. Yeah. What's he pointing at, and what does that mean to his well, teammates? Most time, that's that's pointing to the to who the Mike linebacker. They are identifying who the Mike linebacker is. So, you know, like tonight, you see, you know, we have a six-man box. A lot of times, there's four defensive linemen, two linebackers there in the box. But sometimes it just depends on, you know, certain plays or, you know, uh, you know, who you identify is up to you and you have to make that decision. Sometimes it's based on the play, sometimes it's based on personnel, uh, but you have to make that decision. And a lot of times that comes from, you know, what your coaches want. You have to make sure that you make the right decision and that's through film study. I mean, that's through preparation and, and uh, he does that very well. For those listening who have heard the term Mike Linebacker, yeah. they might not know yeah, just who that is. Yeah, if we're talking about the middle linebacker, that's the starting point of where we're starting to play from. So, 
uh, that's what we're working toward. And, you know, so sometimes it might be that we you know, identify the mic right in front of us, or it could be that you identify a mic linebacker that's on the fringe of the box. And if that happens, then, you know, it changes a little bit of how you work to you're working to that person. So it just throws off, you know, kind of, uh, you know, who you're working to, you have to make sure you, you make the right decision. And, and so it's, it's, uh, it's stressful, <laughs> but and, it's fun. <laughs> and as a dad, yeah. you, your stress level begins before the ball is snapped. Yeah. You're yeah. worrying about the play that's going to be called and Zach's call at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but you know the the really neat thing about it is, I mean that that's that's when it's really neat to be just a dad. And I mean I you know I just watch what happens, and I'm just enjoying the game just like anybody else. And uh, you know of course I'm I'm watching the linemen because that's what I always love to watch. And uh, you know and that's that, that's something that uh, I think that where games are won and lost, and and so I'll I'll always believe that. And uh, I just uh, I, I really enjoy being able to watch uh, watch him play. It's just it's it's it's, it's really neat. You don't have inside information, obviously. We're not asking that. Mm -hmm. But what do you foresee as the offensive strategy in this opening game with this experienced offensive line? Yeah. A quarterback that's not as experienced and some top flight run running backs. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I, I think that they want to be balanced. I mean, I, I really believe that uh, they want to be able to do both. And I mean, I know that's <laughs> that's probably any offensive strategy, but I really believe that because I, I really think that if you become too heavy one way or the other, it makes it very difficult to uh, uh, to be as successful or do what you want to do. So I, I, I think we need to be able to run the football, but we've got to also have, uh, you know, uh, a passing game that's going to be able to take the ball down the field when we need to. If Garrett Green is, in fact, the starting quarterback, as most are assuming, tell me about his personality. Well, I, I just think both both quarterbacks, I mean, I, I think that they're both, uh, you know, the thing that's really good about uh, the situation they have now is both uh, both quarterbacks are mobile. They're both both dual threat. Uh, but, you know, you ask Garrett in particular, I, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a very solid uh, teammate. He's just a, just a, a, a very um, – um, uh, tough, tough-minded kid. I mean, he just, uh, you know, I, I think he's he's just a really, really tough quarterback, and and I, I think he's got a lot of arm talent. Uh, you know, I think whoever gets that chance is going to be ready to go. The inside information. It doesn't get much more <laughs> inside than this. All right. Thanks for that uh, update on the Mountaineers, and yeah. we hope you have a safe trip to State College yep. and enjoy the football game. That's yes, most of us will be watching from our yep. couches. Thank you. We're having quite a game here tonight at East West Stadium. The Polar Bears have already scored the most points ever in this series, tying 2019 when Fairmont won it back in 2019 by a 56 to nothing score. Well, it's 56 to six here at halftime. And when we come back, we'll check the first half stats and have the start of the second half here on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. City National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand. With favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings, starting at $7.99. Or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> you have a goal. 
You know what you want. Start with us. New River Community and Technical College, your community college. Take classes online or in a classroom in Beaver, Lewisburg, Summersville, or Princeton. Or step outside the classroom in one of our technical or health programs. Find flexible and affordable options to help you reach your goal. It's closer than you think when you start with us. New River Community and Technical College. Apply today. 38 to nothing polar bear win in Clarksburg. Fairmont's overall record against RCB is 17 and 11. The Polar Bears are nine and four at home. And they will expand on both of those numbers with this game tonight. Last season when the two teams played, Dylan Hours ran for 125 yards. And Trey Longwell caught a 56 yard touchdown pass. The Polar Bears had 467 yards of offense in that game, in that shutout 38 to nothing at RCB. Okay, let's check the stats in this game tonight. On the ground, RCB has 126 total yards. Their leading rusher is their freshman, Jaden Hatfield, who has 90 yards rushing, including a 64-yard touchdown run. On the Fairmont side, 86 rushing yards. The ball covet coming from Dylan Hours, 46 yards on five carries. Brody Whitehair, the quarterback, 24 yards on three attempts. Through the air, Whitehair has completed eight of 11 passes for 164 yards and four touchdowns. Also one interception. And for RCB, Rylan Rock has completed one of four passes for five yards, no interceptions, no touchdowns. Four first downs for the Flying Eagles, nine for the Polar Bears. Total yardage at the half, Fairmont Senior 250, RCB 131. Penalties haven't been much of a factor in this game. The Polar Bears have been hit with three flags for 35 yards. RCB three penalties for 14. Touchdown scorers. Take us a while to do that one. Brody Whitehair scored the first touchdown of the game. 13 yard run, 10.51 to go in the first quarter. Next time out, let me just mention, it'll go faster if I tell you this. Cam Peschel connected on each of the extra points. So when I tell you who scored the touchdown, just assume that Peschel kicked the extra point because he did. Next, it's Dylan Hours on a five-yard pass play from Whitehair. That was just about a minute later, 9.56 to go in the first quarter because RCB fumbled on its first play from scrimmage. Then the Polar Bears get it back on another RCB fumble on their second play from scrimmage. And Gavin Michael catches a 30-yard pass from Whitehair, 8.56 to go in the first quarter. And the Polar Bears are up 21 to nothing. I mean, we've not even played, we've barely played three minutes of the game, and the Polar Bears have three touchdowns. With five minutes to go in the first quarter, Whitehair runs it in from four the yards out, and, and the Polar Bears lead 28-0. That was the score at the end of the first quarter, and it didn't take the Polar Bears long to score in the second quarter. A 24-yard run by Damani Johnson. Gives the Polar Bears six more points. Dylan Hours, a 59-yard run. And then on the kickoff to start the second half, the Polar Bears kick it off, and it's returned all the way down to the 21-yard line. So RCB will go first down and 10. Told you it was a lot of scoring. Didn't even get a chance to give you all of the scores before we start the second half. And RCB ready to go first down with the football in its territory at the 21-yard line. Polar Bears start out along the defensive line. Deshaun Floyd in there along with Jay Papali, Tucker Hayhurst. RCB has Rock at quarterback. Jones gets the handoff. There's a big hole. Gets out over the 25, the 30, the 35, and up to the 36-yard line. Hit and brought down by Jason Walker. And also in the stop for the Polar Bears was Justice Smith. And pretty, pretty well uh, blocked play on that left side of the uh, RCB offensive line. 15-yard run for Latrell Jones and an RCB first down. Polar Bears have all second and third line players in the game. 
RCB obviously still with its starting group. Handoff goes to the fullback, and the football is carried up to the 40 and over the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Flag on the play. Matanamiki carries the football. Flag on the play. Face mask hey, called against the polar bears. Looks like it's just the five yard variety, but it'll be enough for an RCB first down. Five yard on a run and five yards on the penalty. So RCB has its sixth first down. So the Flying Eagles are getting experience now of moving the football, something that they didn't do much of in the first half. Trailing the Polar Bears 56 to six. Under center is Rock, and he hands it off to Jones. Jones coming this way, gets to the 50, inside the 50 to the 45, and then dragged down at about the 40-yard line. Bracero in on the tackle for the Polar Bears. Yeah, they run the uh, the counter gap play. It's famed by the Washington Redskins, uh, where they pulled the uh, the guard in the tackle and uh, executed it pretty well that time. So it's a first down run, and Latrell Jones has gained 60 yards in the game tonight. RCB has its seventh first down, and the ball is at the 41 in Fairmont Territory. 10:25 turning clock, third quarter. McMillian goes in motion. Hatfield gets the handoff, and he is hit, and he doesn't get free. Dakota nicely has him, along with Deshaun Floyd. Yeah, that play was caused by uh, Floyd on that play. He got really nice penetration that time and, uh, and set it up nicely for, uh, for both him and uh, nicely to make a play. No gain on that play. And it's going to bring up a second down and 10. In case you're wondering about Deshaun Floyd, he is a 6'1", 308-pound sophomore along the front line for the Polar Bears. Second and 10 RCB, toss comes to Jones. Jones looks for a hole, now takes it to the outside, to the 35 and close to the 34-yard line, stays in bounds, and he's brought down by Walker. Going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. Yeah, these reps are so critical for uh, these the players that are in the game now. And, um, you know, as they show they can perform, they, uh, you know, they, they will get more reps, uh, you know, in with the first team. Uh, it's, it's very important for the rest of this game. They're down in three for the Flying Eagles at the Fairmont 34-yard line. First man through, Matanamiki gets the handoff down to the 31-yard line. Wrapped up and brought down there. Drew Jackson in on the tackle for the Polar Bears, but it'll be a first down for RCB. Yeah, and as we've learned over the years, uh, it's it's a long season, and you first have down. to have depth. RCB. You have to throughout the course of the season, you're going to need uh, a lot of bodies, and uh, so you know, get they they get the chance to show that they can perform. That's going to that's going to elevate them. Wide out to the left side. And also, Junior Smith wide to the right. Fake pitch, handoff goes to the big back up the middle. And Matamiki takes it inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line. 33 to ball carry. Jackson in on the tackle along with the Polar Bears, Jackson Lowther. Yeah, nice job by Lowther on that counter play. They, he stayed home that time and, uh, and really did a nice job of, uh, of being in the gap where he needed to be. Balls at the 27-yard line. Fairmont Senior 56, RCB 6. And the Flying Eagles driving now in Polar Bear territory. Second down play coming up. Handoff goes to Jones. Jones breaks free off the left side, ducks through a tackle, takes it inside the 20. He's down to the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's into the end zone. It's an RCB touchdown. 27-yard run by Latrell Jones, and RCB has scored, and it's now 56 to 12. So the Flying Eagles will now go for the conversion. First touchdown they scored, Junior Smith ran at the quarterback spot and tried to throw it to the regular quarterback, Ryland Rock, but he couldn't catch it. And Rock is going to bring his team up 
now at the three-yard line going for two. He's up under center this time, and there's some movement at the line of scrimmage, and a penalty flag is thrown. False start called against the Flying Eagles, and that'll take the ball back to the eight. So if the plan was to run the big full back up the middle, they might have to revise the strategy now with the football back at the eight-yard line. Going for two, Fairmont leads at 56 to 12 with 7.39 on the clock. We're in the third quarter from East West Stadium. Next week, it's another Thursday night game as the Polar Bears play here at home against Preston. Rock under center going for two. He gives it to the deep back, and that is Hatfield, and Hatfield weaves his way into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Jaden Hatfield takes it in from eight yards out, and there's timeout on the field, 7.39 to go third quarter. Fairmont Senior 56, RCB 14, a 93.1 WFGM. The National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> RCB ready to kick off from left to right with the Polar Bears on top, 56 to 14. Kicking off for Robert C. Byrne, number 86, Bryson McAtee, back for Fairmont Senior. Dylan Hours and Cannon Dinger back to return the kick. Number 10, Cannon Dinger. Bryson McAtee kicking off, and this one is sailing out of bounds on the far side of the field, and the Polar Bears will get the ball at the 35-yard line. So Fairmont Sr. brings its team from the sidelines. And the Polar Bears have their regulars in on this possession. They have the reserves in on defense. RCB scored, so the Polar Bears counter now with their first-line players, leading 56-14. to 14. Football marked at the 35-yard line on the far hash marks. Fairmont moves from right to left. Arbogast over the ball at center. Richmond and Angeline, the guards. Bigelow and Hayhurst are the tackles. Johnson sets up as the running back behind Whitehair, and Johnson gets the handoff, slips a tackle at the line of scrimmage, comes back the other way, slips another tackle, and he gets up to the 35, close to the 40-yard line and drag down there. A lot of running for about five yards as Junior Smith makes the tackle after a five-yard gain. Yeah, Dawson just uh, didn't have a lot uh, on the front side and uh, just decided to cut it back, but still made some positive yards out of a out of, uh, small gain. Second down and five for the Polar Bears now. White here out of the pistol formation. This time he has Chris Wilson behind him. Play clock down to 12. White here. Quick pass far side. Hours catches it at the 40. He gets to the four, or out, Canfield rather, gets it to the 45 up to the 50 and down to the 49 yard line. It'll be an 11-yard pass play. Yeah, good decision that time, but why here they uh, they were playing off Canfield a good uh, a good bit that time. So Canfield makes his first catch of the season, and it's first down and ten for the Polar Bears from the 49 in RCB territory. Two wideouts to the left side, two to the right. In motion comes Cannon Dinger in front of the quarterback. He gets the touch pass then cuts it inside and then is brought down quickly at about the 48-yard line. He'll get about a yard on that pass play. Number 10, Cannon Dinger. Brought down by number 55, Logan Strong. 
It'll be second and nine for the Polar Bears at the RCB 48-yard line with six minutes to go in the third quarter. Fairmont Senior 56, RCB 14. Whitehair has Canfield and Jones wide to the right side. Michael and Dinger to the left, and Dinger comes in motion from left to right. And the handoff goes up the middle, and it's Boda with it. He's inside the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, and down to the 25-yard line. Taron Boda carries the football for the Polar Bears down to the 25-yard line, and a flag is down close to the 30. Flag on the play. Block in the back, called against the Polar Bears. Assessed from the spot of the foul, which will be the 29-yard line. So it'll be a 19-yard gain for Boda, and then the penalty assessed after that. So the Polar Bears come out now. First down and 10. They get the first down on the play. And the ball at the 39 in RCB territory. Three receivers to the right. Dinger comes in motion behind the running backs. And there is the option to the right. Dinger gets the pitch. Running to the right side. Gets to the 40. Down the sidelines at the 35. He's at the 30. And he goes down out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. It'll be a polar bear first down after an 11-yard gain for Cannon Dinger. That's a running play for Dinger. Yeah, pretty well executed. They had uh, edge uh, blitz pressure coming off from the field, and we, uh, we executed the option that time. Looked as though it was coming to the near side, then it went back to the right, and Dinger went down the far sidelines for Polar Bear first down. Timeout called by RCB at the line of scrimmage. 4.44 to go, third quarter from Fairmont. The score, the Polar Bears 56, Robert Seabird 14 on 93.1 WFGM. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. To the right, Jones and Canfield. Michael sends Canfield in motion and fakes the touch pass to him and hands it off to Boda in the backfield. Boda down to the 25. He's at the 20 and gets close to the 15-yard line. Nice run by Taryn Boda. Making the stop for the Flying Eagles was Logan Fordyce. 12-yard gain for Taryn Boda. And another Fairmont first down. Keeps the drive alive. Ball marked at the 16-yard line. Canfield lines up behind the quarterback Whitehair now on this first and 10 play. Low snap. Whitehair picks it up, mix up on the play, and Whitehair one, runs with it to the far side. Inside the 10, the 5, and he takes the ball down to the goal line, and he's into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. Flag on the play. The touchdown goes from the 16-yard line, but a flag was thrown on the far side of the field. And a penalty coming up against the Polar Bears. There was a mix-up and a bad snap, and then when Whitehair picked it up, he went to either fake the handoff or hand it off, and the running back was on the other side. So it was kind of mixed up from the beginning, but then Whitehair took it into the end zone. Fairmont called for holding penalty. 
It's going to be first down and 15. Whitehair has Michael in motion, and he hands the ball off up the middle to Canfield, and Canfield takes it inside the 15, the 10, and down to about the nine-yard line. Junior Smith makes the tackle for RCV, but it'll be a seven-yard gain for Canfield. Yeah, very well blocked, getting a hat on a hat. Uh, look, looks very good. Second down coming up for the Polar Bears. At about three yards to go, the ball inside the 10-yard line. Michael has, or Whitehair rather, has Canfield to his left. In motion comes Dinger. There's a mix-up on the toss to him, and Whitehair has to fall on it. And that should be called an incomplete pass. And it is. So it's going to be third down for the Polar Bears. It's that crazy touch pass that it almost seemed as though it started with Tavon Austin at WVU. Yeah. Because it looks like a running play, but just that little bit of air between the running back and the quarterback make it a pass and not a run. Third down four for the Polar Bears. Ball just inside the 10-yard line. Whitehair looks to pass, sends it, lofting it into the end zone, and reaching up for it is Dinger, but he can't catch it. It's over his head incomplete, and it's going to bring up a fourth down for Fairmont Senior. Number one, That was a great effort by Dinger that time. Uh, just came up a little short. I think they're going to give Cam Peschel a chance to attempt a field goal here. He has never tried a field goal, but watching him in warm-up before the game, he actually connected on a 40-yarder. This is well within his range, but it's different when it's in game conditions. Ball is going to be set down on the 17. It'll be a 27-yard attempt for Cannon Dinger, the junior kicker. Ball on the tee. The kick is a low line drive. No good. Field goal fails, and there's timeout on the field with 2.32 to go in the third quarter. Fairmont Senior 56, RCB 14 on 93.1 WFGM. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Two minutes and 32 seconds to go in this game. RCB had a player shaken up, and that was Jaden Hatfield. Hatfield's had quite a game for the Flying Eagles, and he comes to the sidelines. He was just having problems with cramps. You see so much of that early in the season. Haven't seen that too often, though, in our games. Uh, last week in the Lewis County game, and this one tonight, that hasn't happened very often. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's a positive for us that, that we're not having those. Uh, yeah, but early on, you do you do see a lot of that. RCB has the football now. Line of scrimmage will be the 20-yard line. <clears throat> First down and 10. And RCB has Junior Smith at quarterback. And the handoff goes to Latrell Jones. And Jones is hit by Boda and then finished off on the far side. By Wagner, it'll be a gain of about four yards on the play, second down and six. Yeah, if it had been just another half second or so, Nisley would have had the quarterback. Jones getting close to 100 yards rushing for RCB tonight. Second down, six yards to go. Ball at the 24-yard line. Quarterback under center, and the quarterback on a keeper to the right side, and he gets running room out over the 35, the 40, the 45. He's at midfield. Wagner hits him, and the flag is thrown, and he goes down at about the 39-yard line. Flag thrown near midfield. 
Flag on the play. Flag thrown back at the 49 yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 24. So it's going to be a big gain no matter what the penalty is. And the penalty appears to be going against Fairmont. Personal foul, Personal foul face, face mask. mask. <clears throat> so add 15 to the run. Started at the 24, and it's going to come down to the 24. So that's 52 yards, not all on the run though. 37 on the run and 15 on the penalty. And that was Junior Smith who was running at quarterback on a keeper. And he gets a first down for the Flying Eagles and brings his team out of the huddle now. First and 10 at the 24 yard line. And there's the big back right up the middle and he'll take the football down inside the 20 yard line. 33. Ball carrier, down by number 64. Matanamiki carries it. Going to be a gain of five. Second down and five coming up for RCB. Fairmont leads at 56 14. We're getting close to one minute to go in the third quarter, though. We still have another quarter, but most likely we'll be in a running clock situation. Latrell Jones gets the handoff off left tackle, bursts through the line and takes it inside the 10 and down Number inside one, the five yard here. line to about the four. He's going to get 15 yards and an RCB first down. down yeah, six, had a pretty well blocked play on that left side of the RCB offensive line uh, just front of that time. It could all come down to the extra point if this is a running clock or not because the Polar Bears now lead 56 to 14. And here's the quarterback on a keeper. Takes it into the end zone for the RCB touchdown. Four yard run for Junior Smith and with 25 seconds to go, it's a 56 to 20 game. And remember the running clock is a 35 point differential. So if they go for two, which they have since the beginning of this game and they get it, we will not have a running clock in the fourth quarter. Four yard run for Junior Smith. So RCB is going to go home with some positives tonight. Well, and he's uh, he's a freshman, so uh, I think that's that's a very positive that uh, you know they uh, they've got a quarterback getting some varsity reps as a freshman. He's up under center now, going for the two point conversion, and he drops the ball, and the Polar Bears cover it up, and they'll not two get the two point conversion. Yeah. And we will have a running clock. Timeout on the clock. 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's Fairmont 56, RCB 20 on 93.1 WFGM. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Coming up on a two-hour game, the Polar Bears and the Flying Eagles with just 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. RCB ready to kick off, trailing 56 to 20. McAtee will kick from left to right. High short kick and it is going to hit and it's picked up and fallen on by Gavin Michael at about the 30 yard line. That is a free ball. So you don't want to mess around with it when it's rolling around. And Michael knew that, picked it up and fell on it at the 30. We mentioned just briefly because we were in one of those situations where there wasn't much time, but Gavin's brother Gage, who was a polar bear All-State quarterback, went to Kent State, played a season, then transferred. And he is now at Fairmont State University as a receiver playing tonight for the Falcons in their game against Bloomsburg. So Gavin playing here at the stadium and his brother Gage playing over at Fairmont State tonight. Both games started at seven. 
Gavin's dad was here. I saw him down, and he had already said he's going to watch the first half of Gavin's game and the second half of Gage's game. Well, certainly was the right decision yeah. to watch the first half of this one. Yeah, and I, and I tell you, I really, really hope the best for Gage. I, I just, uh, you know, he, he was a phenomenal athlete here, quarterback uh, and defensive back. He just, uh, just had a, an incredible career here. Gage was the type of kid who, a little bit like Dylan Hours in that there were so many places he could have played. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you hear that about Gavin as well. I think it just, it's in that bloodline. I mean, they, they just, uh, you know, they, they're the type that they're going to do whatever they can to help the team, and that's the way that they're built, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the way they play. But, uh, you know, just really, uh, you know, Gage, I just just remember him just just being such a savvy football player just you know really understanding and, and you know he, he in the 2008 18 team i believe he was a receiver and uh you know just contributed very well that that year for that state championship and then obviously uh you know became uh, the quarterback and uh later on um you know in his career so tre tremendous player and how much gage his grandfather would have loved to have seen him playing at fairmont state but as you probably know, losing Roy Michael this past summer, the grandfather of Gage and Gavin came to as many games as yeah. he could in declining health and passed away this summer. But uh, he was into this game oh, from start to finish. And I tell you, I was very thankful to, to have any conversation with, uh, with him. And uh, I always said I got smarter every time I got the chance to talk football with him. I started my uh, broadcasting career pretty much with him and spent 13 years there, and uh, that was my football lab. Fairmont with the football now as we start the fourth quarter. A bad snap. Woodman has to go back, and he can't get on it, and RCB will have it at the 20-yard line. I said we start the fourth quarter. We haven't. We just started the fourth quarter, and the first play. We haven't started the fourth quarter. We're going to. We thought we were starting. Let me back up. I was trying to say how this still could turn into a non-running clock game because we haven't reached the fourth quarter and now RCB has the ball at the 20 with 18 seconds to go. It didn't come out very well in the beginning as the Polar Bears now will be on defense with 18 seconds to go on that bad snap that went over the head of Woodman and he went back to get it and one of those bigger guys out fought him for the ball. So first and 10 RCB. Junior Smith under center. Takes the snap, and he gives it to the big guy up the middle. Matamaniki carries it, and he's going to be stopped short of the 15-yard line, and that will be the final play of the fourth quarter. So we will escape. Well, almost. There's a, an injured Flying Eagle player down. I think again, we're just dealing with cramp situation as the trainer comes out. Fairmont Senior has a trainer this season. You know, we went last year without a trainer and that was a really, really tough situation. And, and so it's nice to have someone at practice and at all of these games. You don't have to rely on the other team's trainer when you're playing away from home. And, uh, that makes a big difference. Yes, so, yes, it does. Lots of football games tomorrow night. One of the biggest games is going to be that Bridgeport-Morgantown game. And uh, Morgantown will be playing at Bridgeport tomorrow night, so that'll be an important one. East Fairmont will play here against Grafton, and North Marion will be playing at home against Preston. That's the Polar Bears' next opponent. And the Huskies will take on the Knights. Preston played against Hampshire last week. Those two teams have both struggled the last few years. So you thought, well, for one of the teams is going to start out the season with a win. Well, it was a 34-33 game, and Preston lost to Hampshire by one. So rough start for the Knights, but they will be at North Marion tomorrow night. Still tending to the injured RCB player down at about the 16-yard line. Just 4.8 seconds showing on the clock here in the third quarter with the Polar Bears leading by a 56 to 20 margin. The 
the 35 court differential, which we were referring to, is what the score, the differential needs to be that or more at the end of three quarters, and then you can have a running clock. If you have that differential at halftime and the coaches want to shorten the third quarter or do that, if it's mutually agreed upon by both coaches, you can do that. We didn't see that happen in this game tonight, even though it was a lopsided game at halftime. We've seen it happen before, though, where they've shortened the quarters, but I'm not real crazy about that because statistically it really messes up your time of possession because <laughs> you're used to the total time of possession for each team equaling 12, but if you shorten the quarters, the math doesn't come out right. <laughs> All right, we're ready now for the final play, but they'll probably not get it off because time will run out. And we've played three quarters from East West in Stadium in Fairmont. The, the score Bears. after three, the Fairmont Polar Bears 56, Robert Seabird 20 on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. RCB with the football, a second down and six from the 16-yard line. The toss comes to Latrell Jones, and he is brought down at the 15. Taron Boda in on the tackle, a one-yard gain on that carry. Ball at the 15 now, third down coming up, five yards to go for the Flying Eagles. Colton Canfield in the game for Fairmont Senior along with Powers Dawson. Toss to the left to Jones. Jones grabbed by Boda again, and he'll get just a yard on the play as sophomore Taryn Boda has come up with a couple of big plays here on this possession. Yeah, I tell you, I really like how he plays. He, you just see him all the way, always around the football, and uh, he's, he's, just, he's off to a great start here in the season. Fourth down, three yards to go now for RCB. The ball at the 13 in Fairmont territory. The Polar Bears lead 56-20. Eye formation, Smith up under center. Smith gives it to Jones again. Jones battled at the line of scrimmage but breaks free inside the 10 and gets down to the eight. Dawson makes the tackle for the Polar Bears. But it'll be enough for an RCB first down. Four yard gain. Dylan Apanowitz in the game for the Polar Bears playing the nose guard position and the quarterback on a keeper runs wide to the right. Nobody sees him and he'll take it into the end zone for the RCB touchdown. Smith with a nice fake. Everybody went with the fake and Junior Smith just turned and went around the right corner and there was nobody there. He's into the end zone and RCB scores and makes it a 56 to 26 game. So the two-point conversion coming up now. Smith comes up under center. Smith hands it off to Hatfield, and Hatfield gets close to the goal line, and he's going to be stopped short. The two-point conversion fails, and there's timeout on the field with 10 minutes and five seconds to go in the fourth quarter. 
It's Robert C. Burr trailing the Polar Bears 56 to 26 on 93.1 WFGM. City National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. RCB ready to kick off to the Polar Bears, deep Navon Jones and Chris Wilson. McAtee will be doing the kicking. Tees the ball up in the center of the field. He'll kick from right to left. Approaches the ball, right-footed kicker, sends it downfield and it is going to bounce and Wilson sees it go behind him. Picks it up at the 16, goes to the right, then back to the left. Gets up to the 20 and is tackled at about the 23 yard line. And that's where the Polar Bears will go, first down and 10. Javon Freeman in on the tackle for the Flying Eagles. And the Polar Bears have the football. First and 10 with 9.51 on the clock, leading 56 to 26. Check the Polar Bears as they come out of the huddle. The quarterback for Fairmont, who was in on just one play, Tanner Woodman, 5'10", 145-pound freshman. He's in on that bad snap. This is still a running clock situation. You might think, well, it's not 35 anymore. Well, it doesn't matter. First down and 10. Woodman brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap, hands it off, taken up the middle by Wilson, and Wilson will carry it up to the 24-yard line. He'll get maybe a yard on the play. Right now by number 55, Logan Bronson. Second down coming up. They'll mark it down just shy of the 24. So it's going to be a one-yard gain for Wilson. And second and nine for the Polar Bears. Leading 56-26, nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Woodman will milk the play clock as he comes up to the line of scrimmage. And he hands this one off to Boda, who is brought down behind the line of scrimmage back at about the 20-yard line. Yeah, got a lot of RCB got a lot of pen penetration in that play. One of, them was, one of them was Stephen McMillian, a 5'11", 170-pound junior. Two-yard loss for Boda. And it's going to bring up a third down and 11 for the Polar Bears. The stats will be lying when this game is over. <laughs> Fairmont was ahead 56-6 to six at halftime at 250 yards of total offense, but in the second half, because of the circumstances of the big lead, very little statistical yardage for a Fairmont timeout. senior. Fairmont. And now timeout called by the Polar Bears with 8.05 to go. Here in the fourth quarter, it's the Polar Bears 56, RCB 26, a 93.1 WFGM. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the large... Fairmont with the football. It's third down and 11 in its own territory at the 22. The Polar Bears lead 56-26. The subs in the game. Tanner Woodman at quarterback. 
in the pistol formation. Third down and long. Riley Green, the center. There's the touch pass to Tavion Thornton. Off the left side, he gets to the 30, up to the 30, up to about the 30 yard line, and that'll be all. And pretty well blocked on that left side uh, to give him the edge on that play. Put him down a yard short of the 30, make it the 29, so it's a seven yard pass play. And Fairmont comes out as though they're going to go for it now. Woodman in the pistol formation. Fourth down play, and they draw RCB offsides. That was the design. The design, and of course you see the regulars do that. But for the subs to get a chance yeah. to come in and get that offsides on the defense, pretty good job. First down, Polar Bears. First down for Polar Bears come to the line of scrimmage now. Game clock turning down to 6.55. Two wide outs to the near side. Tanner Woodman at quarterback. High snap goes over his head. Woodman has to go back and fall on it, and he does recover it back at the 15-yard line, but that's another big loss for the Polar Bears, and that's one of the things I was referencing because statistically you have to account for that yardage. And the line of scrimmage was the 34. Now it's going to be the 18. So that's a 16-yard loss. And the Polar Bears already had a 12-yard loss on a bad snap. And it goes against your total offense. Yeah, I've, I've always, as an offensive lineman, been against that. <laughs> it really, to me, it does not give you the true meaning of, of what happened in the game. Now it's second down and 27 for the Polar Bears. Ball is inside the 20 yard line and Woodman back to pass. Quick pass far side, it is caught. Caught by Wagner at the 21 yard line. And it's going to be a short game, but nonetheless it is a completed pass. And that is the first ever for Tanner Woodman. Well, no, Thornton was his first ever, but that was the touch pass. We already said we questioned that one too. But that was a real pass where he dropped back and threw it. The other one, he just kind of touched it to Tavion Thornton. But this one, though, was just a short game, about three yards. So third down, long coming up for the Polar Bears. Now they got to get it to the 45-yard line for a first down. And Woodman back to pass again, chased out of the pocket, sends it downfield long, and the pass is incomplete. Nice attempt, though, by the Polar Bears' Jordan Wagner. As he went up to try to get it, but he was well covered, and the pass falls incomplete. The clock will continue to turn in this running clock scenario. And we're down to four minutes and 50 seconds to go. Fairmont 56, RCB 26. Woodman in the shotgun. We'll see if he just punts the ball from there. He's back at the 15 yard line. High snap again goes over his head. He picks it up at the five, then punts it away. And it's going to be caught, a fair catch. And at the 28 yard line, that was pretty quick thinking by McMillian to call for a fair catch. Well, yeah, and I'll tell you, that was pretty impressive by Woodman to even getting that off. I have no idea how he got it off. But, uh, but yeah, it was quick thinking on uh, the RCB players and uh, McMillian's uh, part as well. And Woodman, who is not really typically the punter, but he's had some tough things to do on bad snaps. And he had to go back and get that one, turn around and punt the ball downfield without getting it blocked and then taken into the end zone. So he was able to do that, get rid of the ball, and RCB has it at the 27 with four minutes and 26 seconds to go in this game. So what's coming up next for the Polar Bears? One week from tonight, we'll be right back here. Thursday night against Preston. Game time, seven o'clock. Don't forget, coming up this Tuesday night, we'll have our second coaches show. This one, just like the last one, the Parmar Coaches Show at the Mason Jar. 
6 o'clock start. We're there from 6 to 7. Come on out. We had a very successful first night this past Tuesday. We awarded our player of the game to Cannon Dinger and had a conversation with Nick Bardick. Tyler Phillips joined us, an assistant coach, and then we had our first trivia contest run by the Wagner boys' dad, Bill Wagner, and we will have all of that again this week. That's Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Don't forget, next Thursday, also at 6 o'clock, the tailgate show prior to the football game at the Derby next door. RCB has the ball. Clock turns down to 420. It's first down, 10 to go, at the 27-yard line in Fairmont Territory. Junior Smith up under center at quarterback, and he hands it off, and it's taken by Hatfield, running wide to the left side. He's inside the 10, the 5, and he's into the end zone for the RCB touchdown. So Hatfield scores, and RCB cuts it to 56 to 32. That's a 27-yard run for Jaden Hatfield, and it puts him over 100 yards rushing tonight. You know, it's crazy. RCB has two running backs over 100 yards tonight. That's kind of hard when you have to have to watching the first half of this game, but. That's the story. Two point conversion and the handoff goes to Latrell Jones and he'll get it into the, or Duarte rather, and he'll get it into the end zone for the two point conversion. Two point and there's timeout on the field with 3.59 to go in the fourth quarter. From East West Stadium, the score, Fairmont Senior 56, RCB 34, a 93.1 WFGM. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. RCB ready to kick off after cutting the lead to 56-34 against the Polar Bear Reserves, and McAtee will kick from right to left. He sends it downfield deep, and Dylan Hours, who's in to return it, goes out of bounds with it at about the 11 or 12-yard line. And the Polar Bears have decided to come back with their first-team players now. Struggling with the reserves in and seeing RCB tack on a bunch of points here in the fourth quarter. Time to put an end to that, and they'll run the first team now with 3.57 to go. Yeah, but I really do like uh, Coach Bartick giving uh, a lot of guys some reps tonight because this, this will be helpful as they move forward. So that's Arvigas back at center. Angeline and Richmond are the guards. Hayhurst and Bigelow are the tackles. Whitehair the quarterback. Howers the running back. Dinger, Michael, and Jones are receivers. And there is the handoff to Dylan Hours running wide to the right side. Hours gets up to the 10. He's still running up to about the 13-yard line, trying to fend off a defender and throw him Number down. Five, and he's Hours, ruled down at about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, credit RCB. They, they defended that pretty well in that play. It'll be second down for the Polar Bears. Second down, about 10 yards to go. Game clock down to three minutes and 10 seconds. Dylan's carried the ball six times tonight for 46 yards. Last year when the two teams played, he had 125. It was the same kind of start. Last year, the Polar Bears got off to a fast start and an early lead. Wilson in the backfield alongside Whitehair. Second down play, Whitehair. Option, pitches to Wilson. Wilson looks for an opening, gets out to the 15, up to the 20, and stretches forward to about the 18-yard line. It's going to be close to a polar bear first down, over the 20, rather, to about the 23. 
Yeah, I do like we're incorporating the option uh, into the offense. I, I, I think that is such a good play, such a good high school football play. If you can execute it, you got the quarterback that can handle the ball, and, and that's, that's what Brady can do. They didn't signal first down yet, but it is. And the first down markers are moved. That's an 11 yard run for Wilson. And the Polar Bears go first down and 10 from their own 24. <clears throat> play clock and game clock. Play clock running out. Dinger gets the handoff this time wide to the left side. Dinger carries the football out over the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, down the sidelines at the 40, down to the 30, cuts inside at the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He's going to take the ball down close to the goal line and finally runs in. It'll be a run of 76 yards for Cannon Dinger and a polar bear touchdown. He slowed down, I guess. I thought maybe he was just going to fall down before going into the end zone, but taking off as much time as he could. And the game clocked down to a minute 42 after that 76 yard run. He ran about 150 yards. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, he was all the way on the far side. He ended up going into the end zone on the near sidelines. And Fairmont leads 62 to 34. So now the Polar Bears line up as though they're going for two. They may just take a knee, and they do. Whitehair gets it and goes down on one knee with a minute 42 to go. Timeout on the field. The score, Fairmont 62, RCB 34. A 93.1 WFJM. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Brody Whitehair has thrown for 252 yards tonight. That Cannondinger touchdown pass, 74 yards. That touch pass. And the Polar Bears will kick off now with a 62 to 34 lead. Cam Pesha will do the kicking. It's one of those situations where the Polar Bears almost forced into bringing the starters back in. Here is the kick from Pesha downfield. It's a nice kick. It's going to be taken at about the 10 yard line and brought up field up to the 20, the 25, the 30. That's Junior Smith and Taryn Boda runs him down at about the 40 yard line and throws him out of bounds. So a minute 18 to go in the game. And it'll be RCB's football at about the 41 yard line. One minute, 18 seconds to go. They've now moved the ball up to just about the 42. So let's say it's at the 42 now. Papali, Apanowitz along the front line for the Polar Bears. Caden Mc McDowell in the game as well for Fairmont. Junior Smith hands the ball right up the middle and it's taken to about the 45 yard line. That'll be all. That time it was Deacon Bennett carrying the football for RCB. A gain of three. And it'll be a second down and seven and this will most likely be the final play of the game. Ball is at the 45 yard line. Fairmont leads 62 to 34. Junior Smith, the quarterback, up under setter, eye formation, and Smith hands it off to Hatfield. Hatfield is hit as he crosses midfield, takes it down to the 49-yard line, and that'll be all. He'll get a first down, but that should run out the clock. 
Tackle on the play was made by Colin Walker of the Polar Bears. It's an RCB first down and it's also the end of the game. Final score tonight from East West Stadium in Fairmont. The Fairmont Polar Bear 62, Robert C. Bird 34. The wrap up coming up next on 93.1 WFGM. All right, so we're settling on uh, Dylan. That makes it easy. The weather was perfect, the moon was full, and the Polar Bears with an impressive home opening win over RCB tonight, 62 to 34. The, the disappointing thing of it is the way that second half goes when you get a big lead, the efficiency of the Polar Bears in the first half is almost forgotten because the second half was not anything like that when you have your second and third team players in there. But you can't 